Good day, traders. The four-step method to high-performance trading is a free course download for increasing your confidence and your ability to execute your trading edge in live time. The link for the download is in the description box below. And the free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High-Performance Traders, is also a free download to develop your discipline, your confidence, and a winning mindset to master the markets. Again, the download for these links is in the description box. They're both free downloads. Let's get started. Hey traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're going to be going over best instrument selection, how to identify the simplest, easiest templates, and keeping things simple. And as previous videos, I'll repeat this, that every video from this point will go into this folder. Everything you need is in this playlist. So if you have just stumbled onto this page or this video and you have a lot of questions or you have questions anyways regarding the playbook, please go back through these videos. I address everything in detail. Uh, some traders are getting way off track uh, with very complicated things. This is a really simple process. Day one, day two, day three. I'm looking for the templates that give me the best opportunity on the day. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today is instrument selection. Uh, whether you prefer currencies, I, I recommend having a basket of instruments and looking for the best template on an instrument to trade. I talk about, uh, I'm focusing on 90-10 setups and there's still a lot of traders uh, they're they're getting caught up in the minutia of, of just looking at a day and calling it a first red day and first green day, but they miss the larger three-day template. It's three days that build up the trap volume. Three-day setups are where you get large parabolic moves. And then on the day itself, regardless of your trigger day, the larger template is what matters, and also the template on the day itself, meaning I, I, I've used the phrase a well-engineered template. So what does that mean? What that means is not a garbage chart. You should be able to, if you're trading and you've been consistently looking at charts, recognize what a well-engineered chart looks like. Is it a pump and dump template? Is it a three session setup? Three sessions because it's gonna go in a parabolic move and not come back in the last session, whether that's on a Wednesday, mid midweek point of the uh, of mid-range point of the week, or on a Friday to close out the week at an extreme. And whether you trade an instrument that gives you a session trade, even on day three, because that's the best one that you've been able to recognize. And hopefully today will help clarify some of that and how we can have other days that will build up for three days and give us a parabolic move on a Thursday. Uh, or sometimes we'll see that on a Tuesday because it's a three day setup. And that's what traders need to understand. Their opportunities are endless. We're going to go through a simple process today, which will help Traders identify that and understanding when we can recognize parabolic opportunities for sizable scaling in, where where the large opportunities are. Uh, and that comes back to understanding the instrument that you're trading, the range that is on offer on that particular trade. So for, for example, indexes can offer a 300 pip move. And in some cases, the greedy bastard trade can offer almost a thousand pips on the indexes when we get a high of week, low of week, opportunity that will go to the other side of the range not not frequent but when they present do you know when that opportunity will present and how it will build how it will build how it will introduce itself into the week on a template and then putting it all together because these opportunities show up again and again and again my objective with all of this is where can i put size into the market and and the process i repeat the process when followed each week, each day, is what will help you identify the five-star opportunities, not for I caught a move, I caught some pips. I'm talking about rinse and repeat trading business setups. And this, if you step back and just follow the process I'm gonna walk through today, I hope it will help you go to the next level uh, because traders are you know, reading the playbook and then completely going off in a different direction. And I've said this repeatedly. It, it's, a, it's a template Monday to Friday every week. You're going to get a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday setup. You're going to get a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday setup because that's a three-day setup. And we're going to show you how you can recognize that today for larger scalable opportunities. And we're going to get a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday setup. We're going to understand how the news can play into that. 
You have to realize this is simple if you make it simple. If you are just guessing and getting into the market, you will get 50-50 results. When you start to recognize what a day three parabolic template builds up to look like, then you'll understand when you can hold on for range expansions, for measured moves. Uh, I talk about Peter Brandt. One of the most powerful concepts I learned from Peter was about measured moves, geometry, geometrical classical charting principles, over a 100 years old, Schaubacher's textbook. This is not new. Afuru didn't just come up with this. This is material that has been used again and again and again. And the market's behavior does not change because it is driven by people and emotions. So templates, three days, three sessions. I repeat, the third session on the third day. Now, depending on the session that you're trading, you might get a day three parabolic in the London session on a British or Euro cross pair. We're going to talk about that today. Or you may have the trade in London on a day three. And then the, the low-hanging fruit continuation occurs in the U.S. session. But it can be the third day. The daily template. Is it a pump and dump template? The pump can start from the previous day's close. New York closing charts 5 p.m. So a frequently asked question that I receive from traders is, well, yeah, but I use London closing charts. Well, London, the, the market closes on Friday, not when London closes. It closes when New York closes. And it's 5 p.m. Those are the charts that I use. That's how things work. I, I, I know that people have been told other things. This is what I use. 5 p.m. New York closing charts. I know that people are being told all kinds of stuff. But this is what I do. I wrote the playbook. This is what I do. These are, these are my rules. I'm telling you my rules. If you want to mix and add other things into you, if it's working for you, no problem. Go ahead. If it makes you money, go ahead and use that. But I'm going to sit on my hands and wait for these opportunities that rinse and repeat every single week on these templates. It's going to be a pump and a dump or a dump and a pump. That's it. It's as simple as that. We're going to walk through that again. The trade setups on a day three or in a session three on a day will be a parabolic trend continuation trade or a parabolic reversal trade. What does parabolic mean? It means that it explodes vertically fast and it doesn't come back. On a three-day setup that's not coming back, especially after a major news catalyst, I need to repeat this. If a market it goes on a range expansion after a major news release catalyst from a three-day template, not, not a stop hunt, a breakout pullback continuation range expansion after a major news release on a Friday, why would it all of a sudden come back? I'm not talking about a stop hunt on the news and reversing at the New York Open. I'm talking about a market that breaks out, pulls back, and continues into the New York session on a range expansion. People will blow their accounts out, counter-trending a market on a range expansion. Go read Paul Tudor Jones. Again, a Furu didn't just invent this. Go back, read Market Wizards. Listen and go reread re the words of these traders that have been around for decades. The same behavior. Read Jesse Livermore, Remnesis of a Stock Operator. So the importance of what I'm trying to walk through is how simple you can make things. There's nothing magical uh, or secretive or anything else. If you step back and look at the bigger picture, session whether you're trading asia london or new york we will look at some asia trades we will look at some london trades and we will look at new york trades the timings i've walked through the timing window you can go back and watch the other videos uh, for simplicity's sake asia 8 to 11 p.m london 2 to 5 a.m new york 8 to 11 a.m new york time that is new york time and the middle hour is the equity hour the middle hour now, I know there's different Asian markets opening up, but for the most part. And if you get a signal on a parabolic setup on a day three or on a day and it moves in the first hour. So, uh, you know, I I have said this in New York indexes open at 930 a.m. New York time on a day three. The exception to the rule is that we may see a high of week or a low of week reversal begin just prior to. To that equity hour session and then the equity market will continue that move 
It'll dump and pump on the open or pump and dump on the open, depending on the template. We had that on the indexes this week, a short squeeze parabolic reversal. We're going to walk through some simple understandings. You need to understand who is in the market when these templates set up, who has been triggered into the market or stopped out. That gives you a solid grounding in a three-day template. Behavior of price. Go back, watch the other videos again. An engulfments and pin hammers. An engulfment on a 15-minute chart can be an M or a W on a 5-minute chart. That M and W on a 5-minute chart can be a triple bottom, triple top on a 1-minute chart. You need to understand these things and the rotation of the hourly cycle. Several markets, oil, gold, indexes, will reverse at the beginning of a, of a new hour at, at an extreme. So... The equity market might open, take traders into the extreme for another 15 to 30 minutes and reverse right at the beginning of the next hour. So they lock in the higher, they lock in the low, and as the new hour is starting, it will reverse and go parabolic or collapse or go vertical from that area. So understand time. We're trading in line with other time frame traders, or I am, and that is the goal, to participate in a market that is being driven by other time frame traders whether they be daily, hourly, four-hour, because that's where the, the oomph will come, especially on a day three parabolic. So in the past, traders have said, oh, you get in on a one minute, it's, it's too risky, it's 50-50, you got lucky. You don't understand what you're talking about. Go back and understand three-day setups, three days of trap volume, the bigger picture. Some traders say, well, I only look at the daily time frame for my, for my direction. I... If you understand what those levels mean, these levels right here, if you understand what these levels mean, high of day, low of day, that is the daily temp, that is the daily time frame. That's it. So we're trapping traders on the wrong side of the daily market or maybe a weekly market before a reversal, building into a day three. That's what you need to understand. The levels, the levels, the levels. So several traders are marking off little consolidations inside, inside of boxes. That is how you get chopped up unless you understand on a day three, that consolidation may be a narrow range day building into a parabolic explosion off of a news catalyst like we saw in non-farm payrolls today. So important to understand all of these things. This, the more you understand the big picture, the box, you've heard me repeat the phrase Fugazi, the matrix, because you're inside, you're inside of these levels. That's the Fugazi. That's the matrix. Unless you have the day three building into a narrow range for an explosion, breakout, pullback, continuation. Traders are trying to counter trend the, the breakout when that's triggering the breakouts. They're pulling back. The first bounce, for example, is the continuation on an explosion for a measured move. So catching 20 pips at the low or 40 pips at the low when a market's about to do a 300 pip move, you're the, you're the order flow. So as I mentioned in the past, quit just trying to buy lows or sell highs. Understand when the real trade opportunities are there. Best instrument selection comes back to this. If you understand what the templates mean, which we'll walk through in a second, markets only do three things. They break out, they pull back, and continue for a trend trade. They break out, they fail in the reverse for a reversal trade. Now, this can be just for a session trade. We'll look at an example of all three of these for a session trade, and we'll look at them for templates on a three-day template as well, which obviously offer greater risk-reward opportunities on the longer time frame. So basket of instruments, and I'm going to walk through a simple process that I use I talk about uh, tr taking opportunities once or twice a week in the Asian session for frontside, backside, parabolic moves. So I have a basket of 10 to 15 currencies. I have Australian crosses, New Zealand crosses, yen crosses for the Asian session. But I'll also look at those because it only takes me five minutes to walk through each major pair and their crosses as the templates are setting up for a day three parabolic in any one of those, whether it be a currency gold oil and if some traders want to follow other instruments some traders follow silver uh, there's different different other markets depending on where you're trading and your uh, selection of instruments available and the three 
or for major indexes. I trade the U.S. indexes, the S&P, the DJ30, NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000. Now, if you're in London, you might trade the FTSE. Uh, if you're in Asia, you may trade the uh, Nikkei or the <clears throat> Hang Seng, whatever that is. As long as you know that instrument intuitively, your spreads, uh, your you know, in terms of the session that you're trading, making sure, like I like to trade stuff that gives me a tight spread, which is why certain currencies, the spreads are a bit wider. I will just tend to focus on the ones with the narrower spread in those sessions, otherwise not interested. Gold oil tend to be fairly tight and so do the indexes. Now I've walked through this repeatedly that Monday is day one. <clears throat> Monday's day one in a new Monday to Friday template. And Friday is the closing range of the week. Monday is the opening range of the week. And in terms of simplicity, just walking through, we have pump and dump templates, as I've talked about. Day one, day two, day three. We can get it on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a Thursday, a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever that is. And then we have dump and pump templates, which again comes back to the same sort of process. We have day one, day two, day three for the reversal trade. And first green day, first red day. Now, this is where a lot of traders get chopped up. They get a down day, and they want to call it a first red day, and the market may just be in a day one pullback, and they're trying to look for the counter trend, and it's all that is is a down day. So, yes, we have a pump day, but the template on the day gave us a buy low reversal trade that goes day one, day two, and maybe a reversal on free cash Friday and it may only be for a session trade from high of day to low of day. Now we have may have a market that pumps up day one, inside day, day two, traders are getting ready and it may not give us anything. It may reverse in Asia. It may give a 50 pip reversal parabolic trade in Asia and the rest of the week is uneventful. There is not really a parabolic setup anywhere in the other sessions. They may be little 20, 25 pip movements on a currency or even gold. It might be a choppy market, but there might be one clean opportunity in Asia for 50 pips on one pair for the whole week. Now that's just one day. There could be an easy free cash 50 pip parabolic move. My point is this, don't get stuck on just following, oh, I just trade this because it does this. Because you might miss out on the easiest trades where we get a, an opportunity for a collapse and it might not come until the U.S. window. It might start to break down in London, but it might wipe out the whole week. The whole week's choppy and this might be a 100 pip collapse uh, on Free Cash Friday. The rest of the week may be garbage, but it may set up into one parabolic opportunity on Friday. So the question I get asked all the time is, does that mean you only trade Friday? You're missing the point. If you have a basket of instruments, you might actually get a trade on Monday that came out of a day one, day two, from Thursday, Friday, for a parabolic move maybe in London or in the U.S. window on Monday. And that may pull back, and that's our new day one. And they might give you a day two trade into the end of our U.S. session. Asia, Asia dumps down. They consolidate in London little bit higher the dump and pump template on day two we might get a market that pumps up on Wednesday breaks down lower low pumps up into the close and rolls over on Friday free cash Friday day one day two day three high of the week breaking down on our Thursday breaking structure through a low of the day pumping up into the close breaking down in Asia continuing in London low hanging fruit in the US window if you have a basket of instruments, you can find a best trade candidate set up every single day of the week or at least three or four days a week for easy free cash, whether you're selling or you're buying in a parabolic move. Some days we may just get a day two trade that goes Asia, London, New York for a collapse back through the low of the day. Session one, session two, Session three, a day two trade, whether that's on gold, it might be on oil. So you might trade uh, the yen on Monday. You might trade gold on Tuesday. You might trade oil on Wednesday, the S&P on Thursday, and you might trade gold again on Friday.
depends on the setup, which instrument gives me the cleanest, best, well-engineered chart on the day over three days for free cash Wednesday, free cash Friday, or is it just a session trade on any other instrument, any day of the week? Where is the easiest, cleanest, best template? I like the short stuff. So I might be looking for a pump and dump every day. And over the course of three days, I might be looking for a day one, a day two, a day three. Traders are trying to short it on day three. And then in Asia, they miss the parabolic move on the Euro Aussie because they're looking for it on day three. But what they don't realize is, is it's a day one, day two, day three setup for a collapse heading into the new day. We got volume trapped up high, might go 75 pips. There might be a news release, you know, 8.30 a.m. 8.45 though, the market continues in line with that original trade thesis. Now I'm gonna walk through an example of uh, just a basket of Japanese yen crosses. If you look up in the left corner, you can see which instrument it is. In, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna walk through how simple things can be. Uh, we had Monday broke out of Friday's low. That means Friday's high of day, Friday's high of day now is where we have stops sitting above the longer time frame levels. The break of Friday's low, our closing range of the week is also the low of the week on our Japanese yen. If I walk through, uh, I've got Euro yen, Pound yen, Aussie yen, Canadian yen, New Zealand yen, and Swiss yen. Now, I want to emphasize that I'm not trying to trade all these markets. All I'm looking at each day over the course of the three-day setup is do any of these represent a really super clean template that's going to offer me an easy trade, whether it's in Asia on a Wednesday or a Thursday, maybe a Friday as the week evolves. I'm looking for one great easy trade over this basket as these templates evolve. In my session, 90% of my trades are going to be in New York, but I'm looking for a front side or backside parabolic opportunity. So if I jump over to the uh, Euro Yen, we'll walk through each one of the Yen crosses. And as your week evolves, it gets really simple to be doing this on, on all the major pairs in the crosses because it only takes five minutes per set of instruments. But I, I want to walk through the process so that people can just step back and recognize how simple things can be. So we have Euro Yen breaks out on Monday. Uh, pink line is our Monday. We'll, we'll blow this up a little bit so people can just step back and see. The blue line just represents Friday's high because once a breakout occurs, that the longer time frame now, if you were shorting the breakout of lower, the low of day or high of day, if you were going long or trading the reversals, as the week evolves, we have day one, day two, day three. Now we have a market that as we trade day one, day two, day three is making lower lows before collapsing parabolically. Now, if you don't understand some of these geometrical structures, then again, I have encouraged traders to go and get Peter Brandt's book, uh, Edwards and McGee, Schaubacher. These are the larger consolidation patterns. When we get rectangles, when we get ascending triangles, descending triangles, this is what gives you the confidence. And I added in uh, the universal EMA, and, and I want to paint the picture that on a trend day, trend traders get chopped up on the days that there's no trend. But on a parabolic trend opportunity, the whole point of the EMA is because the market has coiled over a larger time frame. And that just represents the larger time frames driving that move. So just coming back to the simple process, Monday's day one, we have breakout traders in the market. We can go through any one of our pairs and they have very slight differences. If I just, I'll get rid of these blue lines just so traders can step back. We have day one breakouts on the yen that starts our week. And I'll look at the major crosses first. We have a breakout that pulls back into the close. So there are two types of breakouts, ones that stay broken out. And I've talked about this in previous videos, out of balance, market profile, go read Dalton's book. It's a really simple concept though. The market breaks out and stays broken out at the close or it breaks out and pulls back inside and it comes back into balance. That is not, that is a failed breakout on the day, but this market still has not gone back through the high of the of Friday. So it, it still has breakout traders in the market. Have they been stopped out on the longer time frame? Not yet, but they're underwater if they sold the low of the day. There's a difference there. They're not stopped out yet but they have breakout traders in the market. So everybody calls it a failed breakout right off the bat, but 
it's a failed breakout for the, for a new day count when we when we go into three day setups when a high of day level is broken okay so if a high of day level gets broken day one is Monday day two is Tuesday and you'll notice that on our Tuesday we have an inside day inside day is a day that uh, it's high and lower inside of the previous day's levels. Page 69 in the playbook, it may offer a session trade for a uh, false break reversal or a trend trade depending on the setup. So right away, traders see the signal day. And as I've said, a trigger day is for, for me to go and pay attention to when I come to my screen for the session that I'm trading. Does it is it already broken out when I come to my screen for the New York session? Is it is it? Has it already triggered breakouts and pulling back for a continuation for a session trade, maybe 25 or 50 pips or low hanging fruit? Or is it coiling still? Is it still inside? If it's inside, why would I trade that? So traders have said to me, well, the trade came before the session opened and everything else. If it's inside the high and the low, there's no trade. I need it to either be have, have triggered a breakout the day before a false breakout and coiled and be inside for a coil the next day in my session for a reversal or trend trade, right? A higher high for a dump and pump or a lower low for a pump and dump on the day for the reversal trade or the trend trade. So as traders said, yeah, well, anybody can say it's one or the other. No, you need to understand that when you go to your session, what type of setup is there? It's not anybody can say that. It's do you understand that there's a pump and a dump template on that day after the signal day? No signal at all. Or it's broken out, pulled back for the continuation, the low-hanging fruit, whatever that may be on the day itself. So we have an inside date. Then... As I just mentioned, we have a break of a daily high. What does that do now? That confirms that this is our day one. Monday is day one, but in a three-day template now, we have a false break now at the low of the week because it's now a false break once a daily high is broken. False break, low of the week. But the market has pulled back inside. We've triggered the low of the week. Now we have day one, day two, inside day. They've triggered the inside day and pulled back inside. The close of the day is inside. Now, levels, levels, levels. We've talked about, or I, listen, I, I'm looking for a trade off of the high, the low, or the closing price. Those are the levels that I'm looking to execute at. Now, on the day itself, it starts to collapse into our new day from the high of day. Now, we're just looking at the yen. So, this is the example of where I have a template setting up but I'm looking at the basket. Which one gives me the easiest, cleanest template on the day to see for a trade in the Asian session? We may have a cleaner template. Let's take a look. Opening range, initial balance, euro yen. Um, repeat saying that the opening range is Monday. By the time Tuesday prints, we have our initial balance. That high and low will set, in most cases, an extreme that will hold for the week. Lower low on the inside. Lower low on the inside is the template potentially for what? The pump and dump. As this is collapsing on our day, day three, we'll put our universal EMA on there on our potential trend day. Why would I want to counter trend this? Why would I want to counter trend this? We're not even looking at the smaller time frame. This is the one hour. So my point is this, traders down here are trying to counter trend because it's at the low of the week, but they're missing the point that this is getting ready to blow off. We've taken out the low of the week and gone sideways. A market that coils sideways is preparing for a large explosive move. Day three is where we have talked about looking at range expansions as potential profit targets on the day themselves. So if we put our range expansion tool on there, in this case, I would use my rectangle, high-low rectangle, as my potential measuring tool. And all that is, and I'll repeat this, uh, traders have asked, well, how do you do your FIB tool? All it is is I just change the numbers. I get 50%, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500%. And this rectangle, this high-low rectangle, is just going back to classical charting principles, a geometrical structure that potentially I'm targeting now for a measured move on day three, at least 100, 200, depending on 
the time frame of the setup. And in this case, we saw low hanging fruit blow off that did another range expansion. And this market actually went 400% from this initial Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday setup. While I'm on each chart, and then obviously this pair on all the pairs, there was some big moves on the end crosses. But just going back to understanding Friday, we broke out the low of the week. Okay, on, on the yen, on the euro yen, the pound yen. The Aussie yen did not break the low of the week until day two. So we have a market that broke the low of Friday, and Friday was an inside day on uh, the Aussie yen. The inside day, this is not a false break, right? We've got an inside day that has come from the low of the week on Thursday. Friday's an inside day. It's broken down on Monday. That is not a false break. A false break on an inside day breaks out and pulls back right away and goes to the other side because they've got inside day traders trapped. So now we're potentially beginning a trend trade. Now here's an example of where Aussie major red news was the catalyst on day two for the range expansion trade. Now let's go back and look at range expansion. We have a day two that, that's gone vertical on news and then exploded and collapsed down for a full expansion of the high-low range on day two, uh, as opposed to the other pairs, which inside day on the pound yen on day two, a uh, little bit lower low on euro yen, and an inside day on the Japanese yen. So this market was already in breakout, Aussie yen, so an example of where uh, traders may have had an opportunity uh, in the we had major red news again on Thursday, uh, which was Wednesday evening our time, but Thursday morning Asian session, Wednesday evening North America time. Uh, on our Wednesday reset, day one, day two, day three goes parabolic before closing back down near the low. Not quite a first red day, but same type of behavior for a reset day. Peak formations are up. But how does price behave on the following day? Now, Thursday on all the pairs, the yen went parabolic. And another example of where I can take the high-low of the range of our rectangle on the reset as a potential profit target if I am looking for a low-hanging fruit continuation in the U.S. session. We come to Friday, and we are inside the high and low of the day. There is no best trade candidate. Now, I know there's traders that traded it. There's a high-low volatility there. But in terms of my template, this is just a consolidation now after a large parabolic move on Thursday. Same thing on the Japan, uh, sorry, the Canadian Japanese gym coming back to our process. Monday breaks the low of Friday. We have day one shorts in the market. Day two, day three coiling sideways. And you'll notice trap volume on day three above the closing price. So another easy thing to recognize, one push, two push, and three pushes. The three peaks on day three are up above closing price. So little simple things would have given traders the confidence for a backside parabolic collapse on any one of these instruments if you start to recognize some simple things. Uh, and having the basket just allows me to look for one or two trades on this particular instrument over the course of the week. So coming back to just number one, weekly levels broken on day two, a parabolic reversal on the New Zealand yen on Wednesday morning, free cash Wednesday. Now we had Aussie red news, but the New Zealand dollar had no major red news and there's no reason why I couldn't look at the sister pair for that parabolic opportunity that came down and reversed most likely underneath of where the news catalyst candle took off and the same process applies. Where's my opportunity on the free cash Thursday on a parabolic opportunity on day two, day two trend trade on a pair that's already broken down. Lower lows starts the uh, breakout pullback, the collapse at the end of the session, the continuation into the open, uh, Aussie uh, Red News again Wednesday evening, Thursday morning Asia and so Southern Hemisphere, and the continuation collapse after that news release for a range expansion profit target opportunity, low hanging fruit in the U.S. session. Again, the market was in consolidation inside of the high and low 
I would have avoided this market because after that large move, I don't have a template for for a, an explosive reversal or a, sem, a setup on the day for a reversal trade opportunity. So having a basket on any pair for London, for Asia, this is just one group. But when you get into the process, you start to walk yourself through each day just skimming through. You can pick one or two of these for one or two opportunities a week. And that's all I need on any pairs, one or two parabolic trades, whether it's on the pound in London, the pound yen in Asia, or even a low-hanging fruit opportunity in the New York session. All these instruments, whether they're Asian cross pairs or Euro cross pairs, again, when you get into the process, you'll know whether you're on, on day two, does any of those pairs offer you a day, a day two setup? So just coming back to the simple process, uh, if we look at the beginning of the week, no matter what time you wake up, uh, so for example, on Friday, we took out Thursday's low. We have day one shorts in the market. Day one shorts, the market pumps up into closing price. We wake up for our London session on, on Monday. We just uh, zoom into Monday's price chart. We, we don't have a setup for anything at the high or the low, but we get a market that pumps up day on in heading into our U.S. session. Uh, this is a five-minute chart, Euro. So again, you can just take a look up here. There's there's the chart. You can go and look at your own charts. We're pumping up into closing price, pumping up into closing price, a triple top. And we head into our New York session. We get our engulfments. One, two, three for the parabolic collapse. 30 minutes into our U.S. window. You'll notice the higher lows. Higher lows up into closing price, a triple top. That's trap volume. What that means is this. Once this market falls away, everybody up top, if they're trying to go long in London or they're, uh, they've are they been long into the close of the U.S. session, there's our pump and dump template from the previous night's close. Now, I, again, I'm still receiving questions about peak formations. Go watch the video on peak formations. Peak formations form the high and the low of the day. But if we have a lower peak formation heading into the close of our U.S. session, and you'll notice it's into closing price from, from Thursday, and the market respects that level and breaks down a lower low, guess what? That peak formation is relevant. You have to think, because I'm getting crazy questions about, you know, but you said, but you said, it's really simple. The high and the low of the day are the peak formations. If they make a lower one in a session, what that means is that this whole day so far now is contained within the U.S. window. That's what that means. There's your there's your, your high and your low. Session one, session two, Asia retests the high. London's inside. And I've said if we're inside, guess what? We have breakout traders in the market. It broke out of the previous day's low. Are we underneath that level? Yes, we are. Well, guess what? We're in breakout still. Peak one, peak two, peak three, U.S. session 12 candle window engulfment for the collapse down through the low of the day. Can we do a measured move of that? Absolutely. Even just this alone. There's your consolidation right there for a measured move target. Just a high-low rectangle. That's just a simple range expansion target minimum. But a retest of that low if you're if you're if you're holding on for more, as this market collapses through the low, I would be trailing this down. Any sign of a reversal, close the trade. You're locked in a bit more. If we were to walk through the other pairs, so on uh, Friday we have breakout traders in the market, and that broke the weekly low, breakout pullback continuation on Monday, the beginning of our new week. So if we were to put our, our just our breakout traders in the market, you'll notice day two is underneath. If we look at uh, Euro Oz, for example, day one breaks the low of Friday. Different template, different opportunity. We might get something in Asia over the course of the week. Day, day two breaks the high of Monday. We have breakout traders in the market now. There's a day one breakout, opening range breakout now. So we have our opening range. We project that across. Wednesday is an inside day. Inside day, going back to the playbook, we have false break opportunities and trend trade opportunities. They pump it up in Asia right off the bat off closing price on Thursday. Reset on Wednesday. It's an inside day. They pump it up and reverse. We may have a London trade opportunity now. False break reversal 
if we're looking for an opportunity in London, we may now have a pump and dump template three session setup heading into our London session on day two, Thursday. The London session opens and pumps up into closing price level before reversing. Now something to be aware of with this type of opportunity, you're looking at a low hanging fruit trade. You, you, you've got the pump from the previous day, but also you want to be aware of what is my potential risk reward on this trade from closing price to low of day. What type of risk reward does that offer me? Well, funny enough, this is uh, roughly a 75 pip box. And if I'm getting into this trade, we're not even going to talk about numbers or anything else. This is roughly at uh, 63, uh, 36. And this level down low is at 59. So approximately uh, 75 pips. If we're in this trade, engulfment pin hammer. So anywhere in this area right here, Entering in and potentially adding in as this market's collapsing. Breakout pullback, continuation trade. Uh, we brought, we want to be getting filled where we have at least 50 plus pips of profit target. Three levels of rise or uh, three levels of drop now as a potential target. 75 pips. Maybe we can keep this uh, as tight as possible and risk reward. As I've said before, most of these trades, the biggest stop loss I'll have is 20 pips. So I will potentially add in until we reach this reversal breakout candle and then be managing my trade as this continues. So as it breaks, pulls back and breaks down, break even and riding that out, taking some off, potentially holding a trailer. I don't typically hold overnight, but I would look to get as much out of a winning trade as possible on that reversal. Remember the thesis on this trade. We have an inside day triggered at the high. We know there are stops are at the low of the day. So when we get down here, I'd be locking in the cash. That's an example of where a trade opportunity was spotted for London uh, in our and potentially conti uh, continuation trade uh, in the U.S. if there was enough room. And if not, first red day after our pump up day, first red day for the continuation trade targeting back down to first level that that can target is the closing price from the previous week. Go back, watch the previous video where I talk about closing price. The high and low of a week and the closing price of the week have the same significance as high low closing price of the day. So you'll notice as well, we went up and made a higher close on day two, a lower close on day three, first red day. It's an inside day, first red day. Market pumps up, triggers the level first before engulfing and reversing, and then the continuation low-hanging fruit trade and the parabolic continuation in the Asian session on Friday. First red day. So the point I'm, I'm trying to emphasize is that if you have a basket, uh, we can look at the Euro-Canadian. It may not have offered as good or any as clean opportunities as some of the other major pairs. But if you look at the previous week, we can see that that pair gave a fantastic parabolic trade opportunity on Thursday and a continuation trade on Friday. Very similar process, just walking through understanding where daily levels are, where, where have breakout traders been triggered in the market. Uh, we can see on Tuesday, we have day one shorts triggered into the market, but the market pulls back inside into the close an inside day again on Thursday, sorry, on Wednesday, an inside day, narrow range day heading into our Thursday, that market breaks down, breaks down in our London window, pulling back and gives a parabolic blow off move in the US session on Thursday, targeting a measured move and a continuation on free cash Friday. So my, my point is that when you follow the process, you can start to jump through baskets of instruments and just look for the cleanest setups on the day, not just trying to trade one instrument. I only trade the S&P or I only trade the NASDAQ or I only trade the pound. Who cares what I'm, I don't care what I'm trading. I just want to know where's the best setup. That's it. That's all I'm looking for. Put up a template. We had three levels of rise and uh, just on gold. This is an hourly chart again. And uh, we had three levels of rise and then a parabolic blow off right into the open of the month. And I talked about front side, back side, and then we had the big drop on, on Monday, a lower low 
at the beginning of our week. And I drew the box for traders to see that. Um, and I'm going to talk about some simple things with regards to uh, we have a peak formation, a peak formation. Traders were looking for free first green day trade. So understanding that first green day is, you know, what type of template? It's a dump and pump template. This is not a dump and pump template. This is a peak formation and a collapse. And if we just project where our front side, back side changes, we can move this up to the low of the day of Friday. So we now have trap volume. So understand if they go back up, whether it doesn't matter where traders are in or getting out, but we have mark, we've got lower lows now and a consolidation, dump consolidation. There's two scenarios. Yes, we could see a reversal, but we didn't get a reversal template. We had escalator up, level one, level two, and level three in a narrow range day on free cash Friday on non-farm payrolls. So we have a rectangle. We have a smaller rectangle, Peter Brandt, pattern within a pattern, and our high-low range expansion possibility. We had an inside day on Tuesday. We have a lower low on Tuesday. Inside, sorry, uh, inside day was Wednesday. Lower low on Tuesday. That starts our day count. Uh, the day count is confirmed when they break the high of the inside day. We have inside day triggered now. Remember, go back to the playbook, false break or trend trade. So traders were looking for first green day, but what you're missing that we're inside of a rectangle. We're not in a dump and pump template. We're underneath trap volume, lower low. That is the template for the pump and dump. Level one. Level two triggers the inside day trader. They go into consolidation, a narrow range consolidation. Peak formation low, peak formation high, consolidation. That is the three-day, day zero parabolic trade setup. NFP collapses and breaks out. Breakout, pullback, continuation. You don't even need the EMA. The reason I put the EMA in there is for visual confirmation for traders to have a universal, just a, a visual confirmation on day three, on a three-day setup. So we have breakout pullback. The thesis now is continuation for a range expansion. We took out the low of the week. Breakout pullback, one push, two push, three pushes. We had major red news at 10 a.m. that started this pullback. Engulfment, continuation trade, a coil inside of our EMA for the continuation for our full range expansion of the high low of the day on day three. Breakout pullback, continuation trade in line with our larger template, day one, day two, day three, lower lows. Now go back through your templates. We're going to look at uh, an example. I'm going to show one more large example, the greedy bastard trade. A lower low on the inside on a Tuesday that starts our day count, day one, day two, day three for a parabolic collapse. Look at this template, lower low. Day one, day two, day three, collapse. Now we'll go back and just look at some different ones. This is uh, the NASDAQ from uh, December 2022. Uh, a lower low on the inside on day two that starts our day count. Day one, day two, day three, parabolic collapse. This is the greedy bastard trade. Why is it the greedy bastard trade? Because of the range of high low and the opportunity on this. We have... Uh, again, an example of where traders will get confused for first green day, but we get a we get a parabolic move on day two uh, from our low of the week. So again, once this daily high is broken, this confirms this is a false break. Then we get our consolidation up high. Now, this is an example. If you go back and study this template on on the larger opportunities of where a market can start to break down. Heading into our U.S. window before 9.30, day three, after a huge parabolic move. We saw that this week for the short squeezes. If we just back this up, uh, day one, this is the S&P. Day one, so we'll just blow this out a little bit. And again, you can go look at your own charts. Um, we have a breakout on uh, Monday that closes back inside of our range. So we have now breakout traders in the market. We'll just put our little... 
dollar sign up top here for traders to see. What does that mean? That means that's where the money is if this is a false break and we're going to get some kind of reversal, whether it's at the end of the week, whatever that may be. Point being is this. We have day one, day two, and inside day. Day three gives a parabolic collapse. You'll notice it's like the reversal half Batman pattern. Okay, and they come down on Wednesday and collapse. We'll just uh, highlight this. So day three collapses down and goes sideways into consolidation, but they trigger the low of the week. Low of the week has been broken out of. And this is an example, again, where we get a parabolic coil, as Peter Brandt calls it, a rectangle within a rectangle. Where's our rectangle, Stacy? It's between the low of the day and closing price. That is a rectangle of consolidation building into a parabolic. This is a one-hour chart. It goes parabolic without taking out the high of the day. A market that coils sideways underneath of the high. This is a first green day opportunity. First green day opportunity that gives a peak formation low. Peak formation low. Now, again, we're just looking at the S&P. We had the DJ30 to also look at, as well as the NASDAQ. Peak formation low on non-farm payrolls. Then we get our higher high on the inside. Higher high on the inside is the dump and pump template in, lar in line with our larger time frame thesis. Where is the money? It's up top. This is closing price level. Pin hammer engulfment. Our level is at... 45.844, our high of the week is up at 46.076. So an opportunity for traders for almost 200 pips to the high of the week. 150 plus, uh, zero stress, no heat. And this is a five-minute chart. Uh, but coming back to the template, this is an example of where we're between a high-low trading range, but we still get a three-day template, day one, Inside, we trigger breakout traders. We take out the high of the day. That confirms this is a day one, day one, day two, day three reversal at the high of the week. We went parabolic. We had the reversal trade. And for an example of where for traders who uh, are, are looking for this to go through the high of the week, remember, they've gone into the high of the week and given a reversal trade on a smaller time frame, taken out the low of the week, coiled sideways in a consolidation Smaller time frame breakout pullback continuation opportunity first hour into the uh, U.S. New York open session. 8.30 unemployment numbers. Uh, but again, the setup is there for the parabolic reversal trade back up to the high of the day high of the week. Now you'll notice that the failed breakout level becomes significant in that particular case. So the market has broken out and failed that level that, that was established in Asia on Wednesday was a level as we saw these pins heading in towards the end of the day to be locking in the money. And then our first green day is a buy low, low of the day, low of the session opportunity, page 64 in the playbook, if indeed it presents. So it's important to recognize when a market is actually set up for first green day or first red day. It's just not a day that closes up or a day that closes down. What type of template are you in? Are you inside? already of a Friday's closing range and we're doing one, two, three for a, for a reversal trade back through the low of the week, but you're stuck on first green day or it could be first red day, just a down day. It's a down closing day in a market that is still going long or day one, day two, day three, first red day, but it's going parabolic the next day back through the high of the week. When a market closes down like this, are you calling this first red day? It, meanwhile, we've taken out the low of the week. So important to understand. Timings, levels, behavior, price. Signal day, what type of template do we have on the day when the opportunity comes in the session that I'm trading? Which instrument is giving me the cleanest, best trade setup for a parabolic explosive move? We got a high-low trading range week. But within that, we have opportunities for templates based on breakout traders being triggered into the market. They're trapped inside day, trigger breakouts, trigger breakouts, hit stops, reverse. Hit the stops at the low of the inside day, the low of the week, going to consolidation, higher high. First, 8.30 news release, breakout pullback on a smaller time frame, continuation trade into the New York session, parabolic, first green day. Parabolic 
peak formation, low reversal on non-farm payrolls, higher high dump and pump from closing price level through the high of the day, taking out the high of the week and going back and collecting the money. Where is the money? So step back, have a basket of instruments. Understand what these templates mean. You can scroll through five instruments of one cross pair in five minutes. What type of template? Who's triggered into the markets? Where are their stops? How is price behaving on the day? I want a three-day parabolic. And if I'm trading a session trade, is there a three-day parabolic built into that session trade opportunity? If not, maybe it's giving me free cash for a three-session setup, Asia, London, New York, maybe US, Asia, London, whatever session that you're trading. There's plenty of opportunities if you understand how these templates will build and set up. Step back. Have a basket of instruments. Don't just be guessing. Understand what parabolic trade setups are. Keep it simple, traders. And as one trader said, how can we keep it simple? Well, if you can't keep that simple, day one, day two, day three, step back until you can. Because the simpler you make this, the easier it will get to understand when you shouldn't be in the market. Like, do I really want to, hey, I caught this little 20 pip move in here. Why? Why would I want to do that? You're, you're probably risking 50 on on the S&P for 20. I'm looking for where is the opportunity where it's not going to come back. I want to I want to sell high when it's not going to come back. I want to buy low when it's not going to come back. I want to buy low until it gets to the high and not come back until it gets there cuz it's going after the money. Then it's going to come back. That's a session trade. How does it behave when it gets to the top? Right? All these things. Preset your pro, your profit targets. Take me out of the market. This is an hourly chart. When did this? This is the easiest way to understand time rotation. What happened when this hour closed at the high of the week? A new hour opened. So if you're looking to counter trend or reverse a market, think about time rotation. There's no rocket science. There's no special little formula. There's no secret algorithm. What time is it? Where are we at? Are we at the higher low of the day? Keep it as simple as possible. If you're not sure, wait till the new hour starts. That's how simple it can be. If you're getting in before the hour ends, yeah, you maybe you're going to have some heat. Maybe they're going to hold it up there to the last five minutes and then drop it down. New hour opens, a little few pips back up before collapsing and reversing back into the traders who were long at the beginning of the session. Timings, levels, behavior of price traders day one, day two, day three. Parabolic trades will explode your trading account. Have a great weekend and may the markets go with you.